Resi 4 Remake has come out the gate roundhousing and quipping cheesy one-liners just as the original did 18 years ago. And holy moly, stranger, you can be sure I was willing to buy it at a high price. Hi, I'm Pubba's Game, and today we're doing a deep dive analysis on Resident Evil 4 Remake. So, my amigos, hold on to your floppy hairdos and breakable knives, because it's game time. Hey, you're probably wondering why I'm here uh, in this webcam box. Hello. Uh, it's because this is all footage taken from my streams, and I can't seem to cut out my webcam, <laughs> so I'm stuck here. Anyway, before we start, let's just acknowledge Capcom gave us exactly what we wanted and just injected the remake straight into our member berries. Because, wow, does this differ from Resident Evil 3 remake? It, they've cut basically nothing here. Uh, I just wanted to point out how well the pacing is in this game. The original had its identity crisis and the remake understands this and does keep it to an extent. It starts off strong in its eerie horror cult, constantly on the heels of our backflipping for no goddamn reason protagonist. Next, we hit the castle, and boy oh boy, it's even creepier and darker, like our boy Napoleon, everything is has a sinister undertone to it. And then comes the island, where the game turns into commando, like, quite literally, Leon heads to an island, kills a bunch of bad guys, gets into a knife fight with a former comrade, and rescues the girl. I can't actually believe it. I didn't see it before. Just swap Leon for Arnie in a mod and you got Commando the game. Uh, wow. I went off the rails there, but it's just incredible to me. That game with so many different conflicting tones can be this damn good. Okay. Let's start from the beginning. Resident Evil 4 Remake was announced. And like many other fans, I was scratching my chin and asking the question, does it need a remake? The OG is much loved, and even if Leon himself came out the screen and said, Hey guys, I'm going to direct this remake, I'd still have a stank face. Not to say I wouldn't believe in a remake, as Resi 2 was fantastic, but obviously, after they massacred my boy Resident Evil 3, I was, I was wounded, like that time I booted up Resident Evil 6. Oof. Then the trailer dropped, the first full trailer, and I became the same 13-year-old boy who had booted up the 2005 OG, and I was completely astonished. I immediately started f to think about my favorite moments from the game and how they would look now. Like the, the knife fight with Krauser, the right hand comes offline, the big cheese fight, and so on. And I started to think about how annoying Ashley was to look after, and how the graphics while well, looking good, still definitely don't hold up as well as they do in my head. How you could move while aiming. I was so curious of how Capcom would bring this game into 2023. Fast forward to release day, and I'm surprised as much as anyone is when Ada turns up just to betray our hero and say some vague bullshit. Which is to say, I wasn't surprised how goddamn good it was, but I was surprised how well they have blended the game into the present. Huzzah! You can now move while you shoot hot lead into the crazed villagers. When you pick up ammo, you just pick it up. There's no menu screen pop-ups here. While there is a fair amount of change, by far the best is probably our mission, Ashley. You don't have to worry about feeding her any of your precious herbs. She actually helps out this time around, and best of all, she actually makes you care about her. I'm going to be splitting this deep dive into three parts. The village, the castle, and the island. I'll cover weapons and characters as we go, says Krauser said to Luis, let's get to the point. So we begin our mission with our two boys fishing food. <laughs> I mean, Mario, no, no, not that one. And this sleepy fella. He's asleep. He's asleep. No, no, little fella. What are we doing in España? Well, we're on a mission, and it's a simple one. Rescue the President's Daughter. And this is what makes this game so good. It doesn't have to be complicated or have any adult themes, just classic nostalgia 80s action cheese, and we are the hungry mice eating it up. Yum, yum, yum. So as Leon goes looking for a comrade who couldn't seem to wait to pee in the dark, creepy-ass woods of rural Spain, he finds himself in a similar situation to Raccoon City, but with a twist of the neck. No zombies here, we've just got a cult with tentacle parasites popping out their heads. It's this encounter where you really get a sense of how much faster and aggressive the enemies are in this remake. As we mentioned before, you can move and shoot now. 
So how does Capcom balance this out? Make the enemies come at you like they are Wesker and you're the top shelf hair gel. And boy oh boy does our monologuing friend love his hair gel. One of the main set pieces of the entire game comes right at the start and it still does a remarkable job at keeping your sphincter doors clenched as it did in 2005. The village is where the game introduces all you need to know about its combat sandbox. When the village people notice you, they're not all songs and dance like before, no no no. They come down on you like Chris's fist hitting a boulder. So it's here we experiment with our tools. You can shoot a farmer in the face and get him to check if your lace is untied. Baddies getting ready to throw farming equipment at your head, to shoot their arm and they'll soon drop it. One of my personal favourites is kneecapping them and giving them a lift to Suplex City. Where this gets interesting this time around is your knife. Not only can Leon perform stealth kills, he has the ability to parry attacks with his trusty blade too. It changes the dynamic of each encounter. It gives opportunity to play how you want. If you're the type of player to run and gun, you can do so. If you want to play stealthy, you can. If you prefer to hold a choke point, you can do it with ease as you can parry instead of having to run. This comes at a cost though, and it brings me back to how genius Capcom are at balancing the game out. The knife has durability now, so every attack slash parry comes at a cost. Another resource to keep your eye on. The true highlight of this section is our good friend Dr. Zalazar, aka the dude with a bag over his head holding a chainsaw. He's faster this time round and he completely forces you to do two things. Number one, make you wish you went to bingo instead. Number two, regret wearing your tighty whities. As soon as you hear his saw going, it's panic stations to your nearest shotgun. The incredible thing is, all of this section is totally skippable now. You just have to shoot the church bell off in the distance and you can skip the entire browning of the pants moment that is this section and go straight to bingo. Bingo. Once everyone leaves Leon for church, Hannigan gives us a ring to tell us of a path near a windmill, so we move on. Speaking of Hunnigan, she still gives you that sense of relief when she phones in and also a feeling of somebody watching your back and the payoff to this is excellent, but more on that later. After collecting some treasures and shooting some pesky blue medallions through the farm area, we come to a rundown house near the lake. This is where Capcom says to us, hey, we know you know what's going to happen, so we're going to let you know that we know that you know that we know what's going to happen. Did I make sense? No, well, neither does stuffing Luis inside of a potato sack, but that's just how Capcom and the baddies roll in this game. This is just the start of many remixed sections in the game. In the OG, we heard a knocking sound coming from inside the house. This turned out to be Luis trapped in the closet. <laughs> now instead, we find the Ganado chop chopping away at the floorboards above Luis in his potato sack. Once we meet Luis, he straight away comes off charming and immediately likeable. It was at this point I was hoping he doesn't die the same way he did in the 2005 game by Sadler's weird ass penis coming out from his robe. We don't get much time to chat with Lewis before we introduce to the big cheese, Mendez, who keeps the trend of Resi Remake's Big Boys Hat Club joining Mr. X and the love of hats. Mendez immediately throws Leon away like he's the clock tower section in the Resident Evil 3 remake and proceeds to give Leon his flu vaccine. Mendez is definitely just as foreboding this time around but I can't help to think how cool it would have been to have him serve as a Mr. X type character for the village section. Imagine this big bald baddie following you around for a few hours. That being said, I am curious why the heck Capcom? Leon gets some sweaty dream advertisements from Sadler who still dons his pimping purple plaga robes. That's not much to say about him yet as Leon wakes up chained to Luis who after some small talks tells us he's heard talks of taking Ashley to the church. This conversation tells the players that there's more to Luis than questionable jackets as he seems to know more than he's letting on. Enter an axe wielding Ganado who finds out the hard way the dangers of BDSM. Lewis gives us the old, I left my wallet at home slip and we're back on our own. Leon's stuff has gone walkies and Hunnigan tells us she's going to do some digging into Lewis's background. What follows is a cool little stealth section where we introduce bad guys to our point of view. 
Also some pesky rats we can kill for a side quest for a mysterious friend we're about to meet. Leon finds his gear, which means I should probably touch on the attaché case. It's here again and you can play Tetris with it, and it's still as satisfying as ever. Quick note, you can add collected charms to give you in-game bonuses, uh, some of which include 20% off the rocket launcher and additional healing when taking green herbs. To earn these charms, you just head to one of the shooting ranges the merchant has set up for you. So after Leon collects his gear, this is where we are introduced to another character, the merchant. He's still much loved this time around and has more personality, I would say. When you see his purple lights, you know you're safe, you can have a breather. You can buy a nice selection of weapons from him throughout the game and tune them up here. Also repair equipment and sell treasures, which are a lot more frequent this time around. You now have the choice of what gems to put in, where and what. And there's so much so that there's a sheet with all the possible combinations of gems in and what order nets you the most cash monies. Also, the side quests now earn you spinels, which you can cash in for all sorts of goodies, such as the Punisher. Perhaps my favorite handgun in the game. Each gun comes with its own perk. Punisher has bullet penetration, so it gives opportunities to line up some epic kills. But also, you can accidentally shoot Ashley. It's also here where the first rifle becomes available to you and you start to realize there's lots to spend on. So after a few more browning of the child's own moments, Leon ends up at Mendez's house, in which we find some dude in his toilet. I mean, if you're gonna do it, you're gonna do it in your boss's house, am I right? We also find some interesting context centered around the village people. There's a lot more backstory now instead of we are cult vibes. Once we solve a puzzle to get into our follically challenged friend's bedroom, this sounds and looks creepy, Leon. We find the church key, and then understandably, the guy with the hat isn't happy we're rummaging around through his undies like there's no tomorrow. So he chokes us out for a little while. He sees we're taken to the Plaga Parasite in our eyes. Dun dun dun, Leon is infected. Just when it looks like old hat boy is gazing into our eyes for a little bit too long, we see a woman in red shoot his beloved hat off and bounce. We're saved. Then Mendes just kind of leaves us there. Hunnigan lets us know Lewis used to be a researcher for Umbrella and we save a very good boy from a bear trap and it's back through the village where we meet not so good boys and a collapsing tower. Leon makes his way through to the church where we find we need another key. As Leon works his way through more angry villages, he comes across a very large hammer and a suspicious looking arena. I'm sure nothing bad is going to happen here. Also, shout out to this beautiful nugget of a moment where you can throw a flashbang into the arena and make all the birds drop their swag. It's just chef's kiss. Mwah! Leon eventually finds himself before the lake. This is where, through his little peepers, we see two goons chuck one of our police escort friendos into the lake minus his head. And this is also where we get a glimpse of our big fishy friend chowing down on our late comrade's body. We realize we're about to go fishing. After finding some boat fuel, we head out onto the lake to face Del Lago. This boss battle is pretty much the same as before other than missing the QTEs. Leon has unlimited harpoons and the arm of Leonidas himself. The aim of this fight is to steer away from the obstacles as the oversized salamander takes us on a tour of the lake, whilst planting some oversized toothpicks into its back until he's pissed off enough for him to turn around and show us his chompers, aka his weak spot. This battle is generally easy, and playing on Hardcore first I found it dragged a tad bit. And I gotta admit, I did miss the QTEs. That being said, it's still a cool ass fight. Once Leon takes care of Jaws, he gets his first Plaga period and passes out. <laughs> Sadler has more sponsored ads for our hero, and he wakes up. A very cool change that I appreciate is that we can now see the castle in the background, which I think is a very nice touch. After a brief chat with Hunnigan, Leon finds himself on a dark footpath and we can hear some very creepy chanting. I gotta say that the atmosphere here is incredible. You get a real sense of tension building as you move forward until it eventually crescendos as we see the shadow of someone whose head is exploding to reveal a plaga with a tentacle whipping back and forth. What Leon didn't know is this look is all the rage now in this part of Spain. The game foreshadows this perfectly. During the day, if you dismember a villager, you can see the plaga tentacles poking out of the body. 
The player goes dormant during the day and only pokes its head out during the night, which is a nice subtle detail that lies ahead. Leon ends up finding the church key locked away in a cave near the lake. This is where the game becomes semi-open world somewhat. We have to scout the lake area for two statue heads to unlock the church key in true resi fashion. But now we can choose where to go first as we are to have our trusty boat and an open map. This isn't a massive space to explore, but there's a good amount of stuff to find here off the beaten path, such as the Red Nine pistol, which can be found in the middle of the lake. I'll be going over weapons later, but for now Leon can have quite the arsenal already. It's another one of those things that makes this game so good as you slowly become more and more of an action hero. I digress. So once Leon finds the heads and grabs the key, we set out to the church. Or does he? Remember that suspicious looking arena? Well, Leon didn't know, but he's a booked in to fight El Gigante, aka this big old dehydrated turd. Another iconic boss battle turns pretty much untouched. The same can't be said for Wesker's hair gel. Shoot this big boy enough times and his, tes oh, his tentacle pops out. Just to be clear, I do mean his plaga. Then Leon can use him as a surfboard and slice the plaga to victory. A little way into this fight, we do get a helping paw from the dog we saved earlier on. He's far more help than Ashley was in the 2005 game. Anyway, once Leon has introduced the big angry fella to the floor, he moves on to the church where we finally meet our mission. Ashley, who straight away lets us know she's actually capable this time around by taking a few swings at Leon's perfect hairdo. When Leon tries to explain who he is, she immediately takes off and I think it's far more realistic reaction from this character. As Leon catches up to her, Ashley spots a welcome to our religion party heading their way and their pair get some headaches. Hugh Moore sponsored ads from our influencer Frendo Sadler. They waste no time and jump out the church and blast their way through angry villages all the way back through to the village. Side note, you can venture back to Mendez's the bald one's house and find some interesting reading material that gives you a glimpse of who he was before Sadler came along with his tentacle bros. After Leon and Ashley exit the village, they head across a bridge to one of my favourite sections, the House Siege. Our duo with more goons on their heels meet up with Lewis and take refuge in their house. After some chit chat they remember about the whole of Spain being outside with pitchforks and torches. So Lewis and Leon usher Ashley in some plot armor hidey hole and ready to themselves for a game of not in my house. As the angry mob is trying to break in, you have the opportunity to barricade windows and pick up some ammo and ready yourself. But it's not long until they break through. Luckily, Lewis helps out quite a lot and he even chucks ammo your way here and there. It's a good job too, as this set piece is a lot more challenging this time. The flow of baddies is constant and just to add some more skiddies to your undies, Capcom have thrown in the new enemy type, this big animal enthusiast with a very big hammer. He's generally easy to beat, but when in a crowd of rowdy Plaga villagers, it's easy to get caught off guard by him. Hold them off for long enough and Ashley will pop out and lead our heroes away, where Leon closes the gate on this chapter. As the trio catches their breath, Ashley has the plaga period and Lewis lets the duo know that they are infected the same way as the villagers. It's not all doom and gloom with Lewis though, he tells them it's possible to remove the plaga in these early stages as he shows off his plaga c-section. He tells them not to worry and he has a plan, but said plan is in his other trousers again so he leaves, again. The next scene we see Lewis meeting up with Ada. It's all very vague and classic Ada style, but the gist of it is Lewis has made a deal to hand her over something called the Amber. We as the players are not aware of it yet, but now we know Lewis is in cahoots with Ada. So this scene, like the one before it, is a nice new addition to the Lewis law. Back to Leon and Ashley, Hunnigan contacts them, letting them know the weather is too bad for the chopper and to find somewhere safe to sit and wait. Doesn't sound like a good idea, does it? Leon replies they'll swim home if they have to, and I don't know what's worse, honestly, but here we are. Anyways, the pair comes across a door that looks like it needs a lever to operate. Good job Leon finds one conveniently sat on a shelf. Wait a minute, two chainsaws? That's right, up until now we've only faced our lovable sackable chainsaw king, 
Now we have to face the Chainsaw Sisters, and these gals seem a lot less predictable. How does Leon deal with this? He backflips. That's right, that's how cool he is. If I was Leon, I'd probably shit my pants and pass out, but not our boy with the feathered hair. This area, in my opinion, had to be more close quarters, as I felt it was too large a space for the Chainsaw Twins to be effective. If you keep your distance, it's an easy dance, but if this was maybe a space similar to the house siege, well then that would be the waltz with a serious wedgie and backwards feet, i.e. fucking impossible. Anyway, enough about that. Once we pocket the lever from the sword twins and head back onto the very eerie village pass, we come across our old friend over the hat, who reacts to getting stabbed by bitch slapping Leon into Resident Evil 2 and turning round to bend the metal bars on the door to lock it. Jeez, this is a part of the game where I wish they made Mendez into a nemesis type character, because this chase sequence is awesome. You have to run away from him dodging baddies along the way, and if he grabs Ashley, it's instant game over. Once the pair lose Baldy by a collapsing bridge, it's time to let our shoulders down, or is it? Nope, our dodgy trench coat wearing pursuer is here and he's taking shots like Charlie Sheen. So Leon decides to burn his clothes off. I assume he's even more mad now because he's lost his hat and is sporting a very gross chiropractor's dream look. This is another iconic boss fight and I'm glad it's pretty much the same. Now however he has a weak spot on his back which gives you the incentive to do an Obi-Wan and get the high ground. Shoot the big cheese enough and he won't have a leg to stand on. Changing the fight again, he now swings on the rafters as the building becomes even more engulfed in flames. This fight hottens up and it gets very sweaty as our legolas friend throws timber at Leon's head, meaning we have to dodge and shoot whilst not catching on fire. It sounds like a lot, but it's a really cool fight. Once we put the big boy down, we take his eye to sell to the merchant. Now if I was Ashley, I would wonder what side Leon is actually on and how creepy it is to take someone's eyeball and sell it for treasure. The pair carry on their path and this is where we enter the castle. Just before we actually enter the castle, Lewis gives us a call to say he has a Prezi for us. And it's not sucks like you get off your nan every year, oh no. It's a Prezi that will suppress Leon and Ashley's Plaga problem. Although the pair have to make it to the courtyard to get it. But first we walk into our welcome party, hosted by the one and only guy with seriously unsettling hair, Ramon Salazar, who wastes no time in doing the classic bad guy trope that is, hey, hand over the thing I want. No, no, eh, I shall leave these unnamed grunts to take care of you while I leave. Mwahahaha. However, I think Mr. Hairpiece should have put his best foot forward here and gave the job to the blind Wolverine cosplay enthusiast in the basement. Holy skid marks, is this section bloody knuckle biting. It's here where the introduction of the crouch button really makes sense. You can cow in the corner or stealth your way behind Eduardo Scissorhands for a sneaky cheap shot. Either way, be wary of the d dangling chains. Leon eventually regroups with Ashley and it's not long before the pair enter the water room. Not much has changed here, it's still a difficulty spike to hang your hat on. If you do manage to make it past, you get treated with one of the best changes in my opinion. Instead of Ashley being constantly kidnapped like the OG, she briefly gets taken over by Sad Boy Sadler and tries to shank our boy Leon with his own knife. Of course Leon catches it like a badass, however a gate separates the two out of nowhere and thus the pair have been separated with Ashley's dignity intact. After treading deep into the castle, and a few skid marks later, Leon bumps into none other than Ada. Quick side note, last time Leon saw Ada, she was falling into an abyss, and presumably this is the first time they bump into each other since, and they just start wailing on each other. Like, it just seems a bit weird to me, but then again it's Ada, so not much comes from duking it out, other than Ada trying to convince Leon to leave Ashley, which is his mission, Ada, from the president, you know, uh, the guy in charge of America, yeah? So I think we're going to continue. Continue right to this horrible beastie straight out of Mordor. I think he got lost and started sieging this castle. 
So it's up to us to send him back with a cannon. Yes, Leon, yes. It's not long before we catch Ashley having a private reflection moment and our duo have a nice heart to heart. As Ashley sees Leon is infected too, Leon gives some words of wisdom and receives an invite to the ballroom from Lewis. But before we can all dance the night away, we have to make it through the courtyard, which, like the OG version, is a goddamn maze. Leon and Ashley work their way through bad doggos and sneaky monk boys uh, while lowering or raising flags, I guess, which in turn unlocks the door because Resident Evil people. Once through the door, Leon enters beast mode in a cage fight and Ashley has to do a runner and this is where we play as her for, the, for a short period of time. Now I'll be honest here, I'm not or ever have been fussed for this section, but I'll admit it's a nice way to break up the norm I guess. Not much happens in Ashley's segment, you dodge Plaga controlled knights here and pick up some treasures there and get kidnapped by one of Sulla's uh, hair pieces bodyguards. And now we're back with Leon, and it's here we step into one of two most annoying parts in the game. First is this bullshit bug infested room, which is not what I imagined when we got invited to the ballroom. And second is the double wolverine room. Just nah. Nah. Yeah, nah. I, yeah, let's move on. So moving on, Leon catches Salazar and his goons feeding Ashley some plaga soup. And he gets thrown into a pit 300 style by Roby Bug Guy. Yeah, you're not fooling anyone with that rope, Bug Boy. We know what's under there. Leon saves himself of pain and works his way through the underbelly of the castle, not before making the equip at a dead monk. Nice respect, Leon. Nice. While Leon works his way through the sewers, we get a terminated POV from something that seems to be following us. Yup, you guessed it. It's Bug Boy. And he stitched his robe and is very persistent in showing us his tail. <laughs> now, it is possible to kill him, but it does take a lot of ammo if you do want to stick around. I, however, don't. So like the OG, I use liquid nitrogen and patience against him as we have to wait for the elevator to arrive. Once it does, we are treated to one more Sadler's sponsored ads. And we finally rendezvous with Lewis, who gives us our Plaga Suppressant. In another perfect change, we are now partnered up with Lewis through the mines. And I gotta say, I love the body cop feel we get here. And the back and forth between the two is quite refreshing. And rewarding. As now we have to take on two El Gigantes, one of which being the badass one we thought we sent back to Mordor. So thankfully, Lewis takes on one and you take on the other with the help of a trapdoor lava pit. That's right. You can give the El Gigante the old Terminator 2, after which Luis attaches some dynamite on the Troll of Mordor for you to shoot. Is there a cooler sentence? Probably not. After the Trolls, the next set piece, I think the best way to describe it would be Mario Kart. Yeah, just Mario Kart. Leon and Luis, or Mario and Luigi, it's up to you, get chased by Baghead, which I find funny as hell as he just... Rides around in his car, often too far away to do anything with his chainsaw, so he, he kind of just sits there, um, all angry-like, yeah. Then our duo goes off the rails, cue epic slow-mo jump. Our team-up is short-lived, however, thanks to Krauser being a sneaky boy out of frame, and he gives Lewis the pokey with his knife. Then it's boss fight time, and whoa, what a boss fight this has to be my favourite, I think. As I said earlier, in the video, this is just pure commando, and I'm here for it. After some parrying and knifing, it looks like Krauser has the upper hand as he prepares to finish Leon off. But wait! We hear a gunshot and see the bullet hit Krauser's knife. It's only our boy Lewis, and luckily that shot was enough to send Krauser running away to rethink his tactics. Leon gives Lewis a smoke finally. In return, Lewis tells Leon to go to his lab and remove the parasites and asks him if people can change before succumbing to his wound. I love what Capcom did here with Lewis, although I'd rather he lived. He serves a very important role in the story this time around, and it just and he just seems like a good dude who got intertwined with Umbrella. A little after this point, we get a call from Ada let, letting us know that they've taken Ashley to the clock tower. So to the clock tower we go, and we're greeted again by Salazar and his hair. And again, he and his hair make the same mistake in leaving us to his cronies. 
but I guess this time round he does have a cool fire breathing statue as well which is a nice nod to the one in the original game I guess. Once Leon makes it past the Stairmaster 3000 he finally arrives just in time to see Krauser carrying Ashley off like it's past her bedtime and to get a lecture from Salazar and his hair. Or do we? No, because Leon quips, you talk too much, and starts shooting him like a badass. Scratch everything I said, this is the best scene. It's like someone asked at Capcom, hey, how cool should we make Leon? And someone said, yes, just yes. Unfortunately, shooting Salazar in his hair caused him to mutate into a big old ball of hell nah which I recommend using an ye old rocket launcher on for a nice one shot kill. After taking care of Latino Napoleon, we hitch a ride with Ada on a boat to the island. I forgot to mention, Ada ditches Leon again, but of course she does. Once we are on the island, it becomes clear we have stepped into full blown action territory. As we shoot and loot our way through the island defenses like Michael Bay himself was directing us, until we come across Ashley who's taking a nap in a locked room. And guess how we get the key for this room? Regenerators, that's right. Probably one of the most scariest creatures to come out of the Resident Evil series. And they're back and they have wobbly dad bods. Oh, and they can run now. So are you going to pay for my tighty whities Capcom? Because I'm not. So after facing off with those nasty beasties and retrieving the key card, Leon rushes to Ashley and injects her with a suppressant that Lewis gave him. And Leon has a little respite until sleepy Ashley wakes up asking where Lewis is. Leon tells her what happened, then the duo move on in search of Lewis's office to get rid of the Plaga problem permanently. The pair work their way deeper into the base and come across a wrecking ball machine thing, not sure of the name, to which Ashley volunteers to operate it to knock down a pesky wall. How does the president's daughter know how to operate this kind of machinery? Huge nose, that's what I say. Once we break on through to the other side, we find the Amber from Jurassic Park, which we mentioned earlier on, and bump into Sad Boy Sadler minus his sponsored ads. He shows us what's going on under his hood and for the love of God, man, just put it back on. Shout out to his weird ass followers here. I'm kind of glad we don't get to fight them as they look very sinister. Leon at this point is definitely fed up with the monologues as he caps Sadler whilst telling him he just doesn't care what he's got to say. Sadler retaliates by using the force to control and manipulate Ashley to shoot Leon, but luckily the gun jams and Sadler gets bored and shuffles away with Ashley, leaving us alone once more. Now we have to rescue Ashley again, but first Leon has a good old catch up with Krauser, who's been a busy boy setting up traps Home Alone style. This boss fight makes you use all the skills you've learned throughout the game, parrying the knife combat, shooting, disarming traps, the works. And once you beat Krauser at his own game, he strips off to show us how his Plaga workouts have helped him get some very questionable gains. Once defeated, a tired Krauser looks over at his badass knife and tells Leon to do what you have to do. So our boy takes Krauser's knife, which you get to keep now, and performs the final kill. Moving further into the base, Leon gets some air support thanks to Hunnigan, we get to meet the legend that is Chopper Mike, who is just having a whale of a time blowing up some Plaga cronies. With the aid of Chopper Mike, Leon works his way to an extraction point where Mike is waiting to pick him up. But instead, Mike picks up some unwanted buggos and our hero crashes harder than the Xbox 360s used to. Leon has to fight through more bad guys than all the Rambo films until finally he reaches Ashley, who is taking another nap. Sadler uses the force on Leon, and as a result, it seems like Leon's about to turn any second into a Plaga head, until Ada appears to give Sadler a much needed dose of lead. Leon picks up Ashley and Ada covers their escape. It's not looking good for our duo, as they're looking very veiny whilst Leon has some hallucinations all the way to Lewis's office. And with his last bit of strength, he manages to get rid of Ashley's Plaga before passing out. Some time later, Leon wakes up on the operating table thanks to Ashley somehow picking him up off screen. He is now Plaga free. The whole of Lewis's office here is a big exposition dump and it's much needed to be honest. Here we find out more about the Amber and Lewis's background and some details about Umbrella. 
But no time to dwell, has Leon spots Ada hanging around in the middle of a bus fight looking the arena. I'm sure it's not a trap at all. Surprise! It's Sadler! And his super slimy arm as he grabs hold of Leon. Ada jumps down to save us again. I'm not sure how she got out of her binds, but she's here. And the pair shoot rogue boy until he mutates into a disgusting eyeball spider type creature. Which is quite disgusting to be honest. Shoot his glowing balls enough and Leon kebabs him through his eye with his own fleshy weird ass staff. Thus the big bad is defeated. Ada then yoinks the amber from Leon and escapes leaving Leon in yet another exploding facility. The last part of the game is a timed escape which we don't see enough of it these days. Leon and Ashley jump on a jet ski as the facility explodes and ride off into the sunset. Then the credits. Or is there? As we get a conversation between Ada and Wesker, which doesn't give us much, as Wesker just boasts about his secret plan, which is now not so secret, as it makes Ada change her mind about working with him. The end. To sum up, I really enjoyed this game, and I think it does a good job of bringing this game up to date, while standing next to the OG as a stellar Resident Evil titles. The only problem I honestly have they cut the U3 boss fight, which was one of my favourites from back in the day. Anywho, sorry for having to skim this last half due to time restraints and kids. I, however, did enjoy making this video and perhaps I shall do, do more in the future. Like and subscribe if you did enjoy it and, matter of fact, if you didn't, like and subscribe too. I'll catch you in my next video. All stream. Adios.